Welcome back to our final session of First Things First. I'm so glad you've taken the time to make it this far in your journey with us. Today we are looking at the topic of water baptism. When Jesus gave his last command to the first disciples, he said these words in Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To baptize means to fully immerse under the water. It was a word used by the Greeks of the day when talking about submersing a garment in order to dye it and change its color. These words of Jesus are not a divine suggestion, but rather they are a commandment. Jesus himself was water baptized by John the Baptist. It was a very special moment for Jesus. The heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. To add to this, the audible voice of the Father cried aloud, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Clearly, water baptism was a special moment in Jesus' life, as it will be in yours. The first Christians were immediately water baptized after believing. I love how it is recorded in the Bible in Acts chapter 2, verse 41. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. So what is the significance of water baptism, apart from it being a command from Jesus himself that we are to obey? The real power of water baptism is the fact that it is a burial service. Jesus died and was buried in a grave. Three days later, he rose from that grave proving that death had no hold over his life. When we follow Jesus' example through the waters of baptism, we are saying goodbye to our old sinful nature. As we are immersed under the water, we're effectively saying, I'm leaving the old me in this watery grave. You're dead and buried with Christ. And now I'm coming out of the water, celebrating the power of Jesus' resurrection in my life. Wow, it's so powerful. Paul also said some powerful words that help us to understand this further. In Galatians 2.20, he says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We are leaving our old life dead and buried in that watery grave. We are now moving forward with Christ in us, living by faith, trusting in Christ for every forward step we take. Water baptism is also the process where we are publicly making an identification with Jesus Christ. When you make that public step of being obedient to Jesus, you are stating to the world, I'm one of these people. I'm a Christian, a follower of Christ. In some countries, there's persecution toward Christians. People may believe and come to Christ, but they don't have the courage to take that next step because they know once they have publicly identified with Jesus in water baptism, they will face persecution. Another final illustration of water baptism and how it relates to our life is seen in the story of the Exodus from Egypt. Corinthians tells us in 1 Corinthians 10, Moreover, brothers, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. This is a perfect picture to understand water baptism. The Israelites had been enslaved for 400 years in Egypt, living through a very difficult time. Through Moses and the divine pillar of cloud, they were led out of the country of their enslavement, into the promised land of freedom. To get there, they needed to pass through the Red Sea, where the scripture says they were all baptized into Moses as they passed through the waters of the Red Sea on their way to freedom. In the same way, Jesus Christ has set us free from the slavery of our old sinful life. As we pass through the waters of baptism, we are baptized into Christ on our way to spiritual freedom as newborn believers in Jesus. At the Red Sea, God drowned the whole Egyptian army. As they passed through the Red Sea, the children of Israel saw their enemies defeated. And so too, when you are baptized into Christ, you now have the ability to take victory over your enemies. 
you can now march forward into your promised land, following your new leader, Jesus Christ. Praise God for his magnificent love in Christ. So who may be water baptized? Well, firstly, Jesus said those who believe may be baptized. Those who have put their faith in Jesus Christ and have received him into their lives. Secondly, those who have repented and turned from a lifestyle of sin and they turned to Jesus, trusting him for their salvation. And thirdly, those who are prepared to proudly commit to following Jesus and living a life of obedience to him. Listen to these powerful words of Jesus about what it means to follow him in Luke chapter 9. Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his Father and of the holy angels. If you have not been water baptized yet, you can talk with your leaders and request a baptism service where they will baptize you and pray with you on this special occasion. Just remember to wear non-see-through clothing that is modest to the eye and it's comfortable for you to wear. As we finish this final lesson of First Things First, let me tell you how excited I am for you on this journey to becoming a disciple who is able to make other disciples. This is Jesus' goal for each of us, not to just become a disciple, but to become a disciple maker. Our second module of disciple making is simply called Disciple. In this module, we take you into some very practical parts of working out your faith in Christ. We help you to establish a devotional life of prayer, reading God's word. We show you how to keep a written journal of how God is speaking to you. We also teach you how to be a doer of God's word and not just a hearer only. We help you to discover more of God's love so that your motives and reasons for doing things are saturated with his love in your life. We'll show you how to share your faith in a meaningful way with other people who need Christ. If you've enjoyed this series and it's been helpful to you, why not send someone else the links and get them started to putting first things first in their life. God bless you as you continue on your journey of following Jesus as his disciple. Remember, always keep first things first. Amen.